Hi, my name is John Corey. I'm here to ask the question, isn't it time that we change the name Fairy Lights? Feels antiquated, feels. Anyway, um, so this video is sponsored by the boys at the Guitar Hour. Um, been on there a couple of times. Um, Jake Wilson keeps trying to get Charles Murray on, but I think the rest of the boys are a little bit reticent. I think the rest of the boys are a little bit um, less keen for that. Anyway. Shout out to Jake Wilson, this is uh, for you buddy. Um, I did say that I would tell you once I'd have a gig with the Power Cab. So this is the Power Cab 1x12 Plus um, that Yamaha let me borrow or loaned me or whatever. And it saw its first gig yesterday, my first gig back on guitar in a very long time. And uh, so I thought I'd give like a, a gig report. The short version is I'm very, very, very happy with it. It was sort of one of the, the best tones or experiences and feel and all of that stuff that I've had on a gig in about a year. Uh, no, but in a very long time. For this function stuff, I, I use in-ears as well as the actual power cab. I think you'll find if you've had experience of playing with in-ears without sort of moulded ears and all this stuff, like I don't have those because I don't want to spend that sort of money on a headphone. Normal kind of the kind of cheaper in-ear styles kind of fall out of your ear a little bit and you, and you lose quite a lot of bass response and therefore quite a lot of feel so it kind of it's not enjoyable to play. That's the reason that I think it's a good idea if you can to reinforce that stuff and give yourself something behind you to give you more of that experience of actually playing with a real amp and I think maybe that's part of what people don't like about modelling in general if they've used it live Certainly for me, I've used Kemper's Live, I've used the HX Stomp Live, and last night the Helix Live. When I've had negative experiences, it's never really down to the modeler, it's down to the monitoring system. And in ears, I don't think, are particularly great for guitarists. Um, you end up, obviously, with quite a focused amount of attention on the high end, and the, the bass response gets kind of washed out because your ears move out of your ears if they're shaped anything like mine. Anyway, so I've said in a previous video, which I'll link somewhere, that I'm using the I'm using the LF RAW mode on the power cab, and so basically that's just the Eminent speaker with no processing on it. And I think for one of my snapshots, I notched the high cut down to four kilohertz. Um, aside from that, it's just doing the job that it's doing. It's just doing the job that is. That is. This could be a problem. Of course there are many ways that you could run your power cap. You could just plug straight in and use it in flat mode uh, with the tweeter on as well. You could try the speaker models within there. So they've got, you know, the vintage 30 style greenbacks, creambacks, Jensen's, Eminence Bayous, all of that sort of stuff. You could do that, but I'm just using it in the LF raw mode which is just treating that Eminence coaxial speaker as a normal guitar speaker in a normal cab. Um, it weighs about 16 kilos, so I think you've probably got enough density to move air like a normal cab. And I'm not using any low cut or high cut in the main kind of tones. And I really, really enjoyed it. So, any negatives that I have is, I feel like it sort of marks up a little bit easily. Uh, I don't treat my gear disrespectfully. And was pretty careful with it yesterday. I think we had to put it on gravel at some stage. It seems to dent up a little bit. Uh, I don't know whether they sell a cover for these, but it seems like it might be needed if you're intended to gig one and you don't want it to look really scruffy quite quickly. Um, obviously, turning up to weddings and stuff with something like this, if it looks really scruffy, I don't think will go down too well. It's like not the sort of thing to me that would suit relicking or aging particularly, in my opinion. Um, so maybe I'll try and find a cover for this because I will be using it definitely for a bunch more gigs over the summer if if they stay in the diary. And the main key piece of advice that I would give you, oh, it also can sort of run on its side like this perfectly fine. And that was what I was doing because we sort of had limited space. About the size of a normal combo anyway. So the question for you, I guess, is is the modeling side of stuff giving you enough benefit that you actually want to go down this route because by the time you've lugged in a Helix, a power cab, and you've got your guitars on your back, yes you can do it in one trip, but 
there's not a huge difference between taking this power cab and taking something like the Mezabugi Nomad, which I've got right there. So it's a balance for you. For me, I find like it's really convenient using the Helix and that's the most kind of giggable format that I've ever used. You know, I can see clearly with the scribble strips what is going on. I could just give an XLR to the front of the house and then I can plug an XLR into the power cab. So all good from that point of view. So that's, I think, why I would continue to go down this power cab route. I'm going to try it with an FM3, I think, next, on the next gig, if I can. See if it works really well with that as well. But the most important thing for me is to hammer the input with as much signal as you can give it. So I think on the outputs of the Helix that I'm sending to the power cab via Line 6 Link, I'm boosting those by plus 15 dB. And that meant that I only had to run the power cab at about half volume to keep up with drums. But again, at that sort of volume, probably you'd be absolutely fine taking a real amp. So it's weighing up those options for yourself, I guess. I did get asked to turn down at one point, which is a sign that the Line 6 power cab probably has plenty enough volume for anyone, depending on the sort of tones that you're putting through it. And if you're used to the sound of a 1x12 versus like a 4x12, obviously this is a, a smaller cab than you know a big Marshall 4x12 or whatever, so it's not necessarily going to give all of that air movement but I'm used to using a combo that's what I've gigged with forever so very happy with it so I'd give it 14 thumbs up hopefully that was vaguely interesting to someone I try and give like a a little bit more of the journey with the gear um, than just saying here's a product and this is what it does so that's my first gig with the power cab 1x12 plus very happy with it with the helix uh, I'll try it with the FM3 next I guess and see how that gets on but if you're worried about does it have enough volume, absolutely yes it kept up with drummer last night and I was asked to turn down at one point. Two, can it sound like a real guitar cab? Yes, I put it in that LF raw mode and definitely for me it feels and responds very very well. Three, it's, it's fairly lightweight, you know 16 kilos so that's quite nice to carry around. I need to check whether the original power cab, you know the one that's not the plus, if that can do LF raw then that one I guess is also a good bet if you're not going to be using all of the IR stuff and those bits and pieces that I don't think I'm going to be experimenting with just because of the good experience I had with LF Raw I think I'd continue down that path rather than experimenting with the other models and stuff anyway yeah leave your thoughts and experiences below I know some people have not had the most positive experiences with power cabs I know some people really like them so yeah maybe drop your thoughts in the comments for me that's a, a really positive experience gigging with in-ears and the power cab behind me just felt like a big tone and fun to play which in-ear gigs generally aren't that fun. Cheers.